This is Christopher Cernike, hosting Episode 7 of Season 1 of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of this podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Writing for CNET, Sean Keen reports that astronomers say Earth has a new mini-moon for now. Astronomers working for the Catalina Sky Survey, a NASA-funded enterprise, report that there is an asteroid that has been caught in the Earth's gravity and is now orbiting around the Earth much like our moon. So for now, our Earth has two moons. An astronomer working for Catalina Sky Survey tweeted, Earth has a new temporarily captured object slash possible mini-moon called 2020 CD3. Just how long this mini-moon will remain in the Earth's orbit is unknown. The Center for Near-Earth Object Studies believes that 2020 CD3, or the mini-moon, will eventually leave Earth's orbit. This is actually not the first time when an asteroid has entered the orbit of the Earth. 14 years ago, back in 2006, the Catalina Sky Survey astronomers found another asteroid, RH120, that orbited Earth for about 18 months. One can only wonder when Earth will have another one of these miniature asteroid moons. Now let's take a look at two different asteroids, Itakawa and Vestra. Itakawa is an asteroid that was visited back in 2005 by Japan's spacecraft. Astronomers expected that the asteroid would be a single chunk of rock. Itakawa was only 535 meters long, and so scientists did not expect it to be able to hold smaller pieces to itself. Surprisingly, when the spacecraft's images came back, they showed that Itakawa was covered in boulders and gravel. Eric Ashvidge, a planetary scientist speaking for the University of California, said concerning Itakawa that everything we suspected about it turned out to be wrong. His research went on to point out that, based on Itakawa's gravitational field, it must be approximately 40% porous. He went on to say, that is astonishing. It's very hard to get porosities greater than that. You've got to start balancing things delicately, like you were building a house of cards. The only way to do that is to gently pack the stuff together. Itakawa has been called the impossible asteroid because as he and Dr. David Catchpool point out, repeated impacts with other space rocks over millions of years should have made Iwakawa denser. This impossible asteroid is made possible if it has not been subject to space rock collision for millions of years. Based on the Bible's timeline of 6,000 years, one would predict or expect the existence of such impossible asteroids like Itakawa. Our second asteroid, Vestra, was orbited by NASA's now-retired space probe Dawn back in 2007. Located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, Vestra has a south polar mountain that is three times the height of Mount Everest. Science Daily, in an article called Dawn at Vestra, Massive Mountains, Rough Surface, and Old Young Dichotomy in Hemispheres, reports that the asteroid Vestra has a surprisingly complex set of structural features including the massive south polar mountain, steep slopes, deep troughs, and set of curved lineations that appear in some cases to be associated with slumps or landslides. Astronomers are astonished because of the asymmetrical cratering and the smooth surface of the southern half of Vestra as they indicate the youth of the asteroid, which, if it were billions or millions of years old, should be thoroughly cratered. At the very least, Vestra's unexpectedly smooth surface 
puts a dent in uniformitarian dating methods. While these two asteroids present problems to long ages, asteroids overall have a tendency to challenge naturalistic origins. The nebular hypothesis, which is supposed to explain how the Sun, Earth, and other planets were formed, predicts that asteroids would reflect the material content and temperature of the nebula when they were formed. However, astronomers are puzzled by the fact that less common asteroids are completely mixed with more common types. In a Nature publication called Solar System Evolution from Compositional Mapping of the Asteroid Belt, Harvard graduate Francisca de Mio and Benoit Carey summarized this enigma by saying, the rarer asteroid types, such as the crust and mantle remnants of fully heated and melted bodies are seen in all regions of the main belt. They went on to write that it is mysterious that there is the smorgasbord of compositional types of small bodies throughout the main belt contrasts with the compositional groupings at large sizes. One possible secular solution to this problem is called the Grand Tack Model. The Grand Tack Model predicts that Jupiter migrated near to the orbit of Mars and subsequently cleared away and rearranged the main belt asteroids. In the words of DeMeo and Carey, Jupiter then reversed course and headed back towards the outer solar system. There are several problems with the Grand Tack model. For one thing, the same force that moved Jupiter would have enough force to destroy Jupiter in the process. Secondly, there is not enough force to return Jupiter to its current stable orbit. Now, to return to the asteroid portion of the Grand Tack model, DeMeo and Carey wrote, Planetary migration ends well within the first billion years of our solar system's 4.5 billion year history. The asteroid belt, however, is still dynamic today. Collisions between asteroids are continuously grinding the bodies down. If the solar system were truly 4.5 billion years in age, then instead of asteroids, the main belt would contain the mere dust remnants of these asteroids that would have obliterated one another. Speaking of cratering, there are ghost craters on our moon's Maria. Massive impacts on the moon gave it large craters and lava flows within those craters, which partly buried smaller impact craters that were within the larger craters. We call those ghost craters. These smaller impacts must have occurred shortly after the larger ones. Otherwise, the lava would have flowed into the larger craters before the smaller impacts. The nebular theory predicts a very slow rate of cratering on the moon. However, ghost craters defy the nebular theory and an old age for the moon because they suggest rapid cratering. There is more evidence that the moon is young. According to a report issued on May 13, 2019 by Nature Geoscience, the moon continues to be tectonically active today. That's right, our moon is experiencing not earthquakes, but moonquakes. Amanda Nam, who is a planetary geologist of the Arctic Planetary Science Institute, said that she would have been shocked had someone come to her a decade ago with information on the moon's tectonic activity. She declared that the moon is no longer considered to be dead. We just discovered how the moon experiences tectonic activity. Now let's ask a telling question. What does evidence of tectonic activity indicate about the age of our moon? Tectonic activity occurring on our moon indicates that our moon is youthful a finding that is consistent with other scientific evidences that confirm the account of our solar system's origin as recorded in the book of Genesis. Thomas Waters, a planetary scientist at Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., claimed that the findings of NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter indicate the youthfulness of the moon's lobate scarps or thrust faults 
or places where the cooling moon surface is contracting. According to Water's team, the youthful estimate for the age of the moon's thrust faults is in the order of about 50 million years. However, there are plenty of other lines of evidence that indicate that the moon is far younger within the order of a few thousand years, as recorded in the historical narrative of Genesis. The tectonic activity that is occurring on our moon today is an indication that the moon's interior is still heated, which is inconsistent with it being 4.5 billion or even 50 million years old. Furthermore, the moon experiences what is called transient lunar phenomena, or TLPs for short. TLPs, when observed via telescope, are typically described as colored glows or light streaks and last for about a few hours. Here we find evidence of the fact that the moon therefore is experiencing not only tectonic but volcanic activity, which negates the idea that the moon is millions or billions of years old because the moon should have completely cooled by then. So we see that the moon, far from fitting into the secular nebular theory, fits better into the timeline outlined in the Bible. In today's episode of Current Topics in Science, we found that Earth has, for now, acquired an asteroid miniature moon and that asteroids and our moon challenge long-age timescales. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on Current Topics in Science, where scientific discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. Please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.